Hey everyone, and welcome back to the latest episode of Just The Basics. Today, we're going to look at how to create this rock archway you see now. This is a request that I had based on my previous tutorial where in the preview, I showed a rock archway spinning around. A lot of people wanted to know how I made this and how they can make it themselves. So, let's dive straight in. First of all, let's open a new project inside of Blender and make sure we're running the latest version, which is currently Blender version 2.9.1. Then let's head over to our render properties and make sure our render engine is set from EV to cycles. Also, if we have a graphics card that's compatible, let's set our render device from CPU to GPU. Now, all we need to do is go tab on our cube to enter edit mode. This cube is essentially gonna be the base structure for this rocky archway. What I wanna do now is in my edit settings, go over to this left-hand corner up the top and change from vertices select to face select so I can just select the top face of this cube. Then by pressing one on my number pad, I can go ahead and press control and then right click where I want to start creating this rocky archway. Just by clicking, I can create this simple rocky outline. And there we have it. There's our rocky archway. Not really. We still need to do a few more things. For example, making sure I've selected this bottom foot here, I'm going to rotate this on the Y by hitting R and Y just to make sure it's nice and flat. I'm also going to grab it along the X to drag it back a bit to straighten it up maybe. And then I'll hit O, which will enable proportional editing inside of Blender. So now that when I hit scale or rotate, if I do that, you'll see there's this circle that appears. This allows me to essentially control the proportion or how much of the other cubes I edit when I change something on one of the faces. So if I scale this up right now, you'll notice that the more I scroll out, the more it affects the other parts of this archway. I like to have it so that one side's far bigger than the other. And also I'll just select this inner top area here by pressing Alt and click, and then just scale this down to make it something more interesting. Maybe make it a little bit shorter. And there we go. I'm pretty happy with how my basic archway is looking. Of course, the next thing we need to do is add in a lot more geometry as currently it's a very basic cube-like structure. Nowhere near realistic enough to be a rocky archway. To do this, let's head to the modifier properties and add in a multi-resolution modifier. This modifier will essentially allow us to smooth out, to subdivide, add in extra geometry to our shape. Now, I'm going to do this about eight times, that is hit subdivide. But if you have perhaps a PC that doesn't handle crunching numbers super well, maybe you might want to go for a lower number. Or at the very least, make sure you set your level viewport down to something lower, as the only settings we need to turn up to max is essentially the render settings. Once we've done this, you'll notice it's starting to look more like a balloon. That's because there's too much of a curve on these feet. I'm going to hit tab to go back into edit mode and just use shift to select both of the two feet. Then I can essentially extrude out the edge or make it much more of a sharper angle by pressing shift and E and dragging them out until I see a pink icon or a pink outline around those edges. But if I do that and hit tab to get out of edit mode, you notice the angle is much harsher now. In fact, it's too harsh for what I want. So I'll just go back into edit mode and hit shifty again and this time drag the mouse inwards a bit just to soften that. Now if I hit tab to go out, that's something a bit nicer, a bit more of a gentle transition and perfect for what I'm looking for. So next we have to start sculpting to add in that extra detail. Well, let's hit control A first of all to make sure we apply all transforms so that our sculpt brushes won't be stretched unnaturally because we've been playing around with this shape of the cube. After that, we can head to the Sculpting tab. Currently, we don't have any brushes besides the default draw one. So I'm going to use the same method from my previous tutorial where we go to Blend Swap and use this Rock Brushes Photo Scanned Brush Pack. Now, if you don't have this already, you can go ahead and create a free Blend Swap account and just search Rock Brush. And we're looking for the Rock Brushes Photo Scan Pack, which was created by user Rubber Duck. And once again, we'll make sure to give a big shout out for the hard work involved in creating this. Once it's downloaded, make sure to save it in a location you can easily access. And of course, don't forget to unzip it. You can do that by right clicking and selecting extract files or extract all files. 
making sure too that you extract or save the unzip file in a location you can easily access from Blender. I've already done that. So I'm going to jump back into Blender and I'm going to go ahead and hit file, append and navigate to where I've saved my rock brush folder. Once you've done this, go ahead and double click on it and you notice the first folder inside of it is entitled brush. So double clicking on that, it brings up all of the rock brushes. I'm going to go through and just select all of them. You can do this by pressing A or manually selecting the ones you want and then hit append. Now that we've imported these brushes, let's hit N to bring up our tool panel on the right hand side and go to tool as we want to access the options for our sculpt tool. And now under symmetry, I'm just going to set off mirroring on the X. This will stop it from mirroring everything I do. And what I'm going to do is also select one of these rock brushes to use. If I wait a moment, hopefully the thumbnail should appear. I'm going to select rock brush number 20, first of all. I can right click to bring up the settings such as the radius and strength if I want to make them a bit bigger. But other than that, I'm ready to go. So I'll just click and draw in this detail. Some nice bits of rock. Now, the best thing about this kind of sculpting is it really rocks. <sighs> okay, I'm sorry. Who do I think I am? Video Copilot or something. Anyway, moving right along, I'm going to go ahead and just add in some more random rocks on the other areas of it before going up and selecting a different rock brush. Just gives me a bit of different uh, versatility with designing this. So I'll make sure that I've covered all the areas. You can do this. The bigger you drag, the less detail you might have in a certain area. But honestly, all we're looking for is something that looks visually pleasing. So once we've done that, make sure you hit even the under areas and even the feet. We don't want to leave no part of this rock not looking rocky enough. And that's essentially it. I'm really happy with how my rock is looking now. So I'm going to head out of the sculpting tab and jump into the layout tab. The final thing we need to do, of course, is add in some lighting. But first, we also need to add in some materials. So to do that, I'm going to use an add-on that was recommended. I think it was uh, Rowan W. So thank you so much for recommending this add-on because it's super helpful and saves a lot of time. It's called the Lily Surface Scraper add-on for Blender. To get it, just go to Google and search Lily Surface Scraper and it should come up first of all with the GitHub website. Once you're there, go ahead and just select this green download code button and make sure you select download zip. And as always, save it in a location you can easily access. To install it inside of Blender, go to the edit panel, down to preferences, and under add-ons, select install. Navigate to your downloads or the folder you've saved it in and just double click on Lily Surface Scrape master.zip. And once you've done that, it'll bring it up. I've already installed it, so it's not coming up for me, but it'll bring it up and just make sure to hit this nice checkbox next to it. And of course, down the bottom corner, select save preferences so you don't have to import it every time you open up Blender. Once we've done that, we can go to our material settings and down here, if you scroll down a bit, you'll see the Lily Surface Scraper add-on. This allows us to grab different materials from popular free CC0 texture sites and import them straight into Blender without the hassle of manually importing each individual map, of which there can be five or six if we want our material to work really nicely. But first, you'll notice it has this little warning that we have to save to use this add-on. So let's go ahead and hit Control plus S to save. And I'm just going to say this as rock archway. And now I've done that, I'm going to open up 3D Assets 1. This is another fantastic website that brings together all different CC0 3D materials from across the popular sites online. And I'm going to search rock to bring up different rock materials I can use. Now you can use any of these that you like. Only certain sites though will work with the Lily Surface Scrape add-on. That is the popular ones like 3D Model Haven, 3D Textures and CC0 Textures. But uh, I think that's besides the point of this tutorial. So I'm going to go to I find one I like. And I think something like this one here, Rock 29, is a nice kind of desert sandstone rock archway. So I can go select the link and hit Control plus C to copy that. 
Then, back inside of Blender, my Lily Surface Scraper add-on appears somewhat different. In fact, it has the option to import surface. So if I click that, it asks for a URL, and I've just copied one, so I'll hit Control V to play, paste it inside of there, and then select OK. What you should see next is that it brings up the option for selecting a variant, that is, the quality of the texture you want to import. I think 2K will be fine for this tutorial, but you can select anything up to 8K in, in either JPEG or PNG format. So I'll select OK, and you just have to allow a moment for it to download, obviously, and save it to your computer. Now it's done that, let's go ahead and see how our material is looking if we go to the Material Preview menu or Preview Shading. We can either click this little icon up here in the top right-hand corner, or hit Z and just select Material Preview. Now, as you can see here, it's not looking very good at the moment. In fact, our texture is horribly warped. So let's unwrap it properly. I'll hit Tab with my object selected and it brings back our basic cube shape and just hit A to select all, then hit U to unwrap. And because this is mainly made up of cubes, I'm going to select cube projection. Here we have it. Our image is nicely projected onto our object. So I can hit Tab to go out of edit mode. And there we have our material applied nicely to our rock archway. The last thing, as we mentioned earlier, is we want to set up our lighting. So to do this, we're going to head to the world panel or the world properties panel. And under surface, we're going to select color, selecting this little yellow dot and set it to sky texture. And this will open up the Nishida sky texture. Now, if you don't see this, it's probably because you're using an earlier version of Blender as this is only available in Blender version 2.9 and upwards, but it is a fantastic lighting tool. So let's see how well it works by hitting Z and just switching to our rendered viewport. And here you can see our lighting's applied very nicely. I might actually set up my camera as well so I can get this to have a bit of a render out. So I'm gonna hit zero to switch to camera view. And under my output properties, designated by this little printer icon, I'm going to set it to render only the region that is my camera area so nothing else is rendering and it will save a lot of space and weight on my computer's gpu next i'll hit n and just go to view and just zoom in until i'm happy with it then select lock camera to view so now wherever i move when i'm in camera view the camera will move to as well now i've done that i might also just go back to my world properties and just change the rotation of the sun a little bit until I've got this lighting just sort of sneaking through onto my rock as I kind of like that look where it's just seeping onto the edges of it. I can also change the sun elevation to be lower so that it looks more like a bit of a late afternoon setting. And finally, under render properties, I can select film and set the background to transparent. So now if I render this out, I can use it as an image for a background with a transparent background that is so that I can use it in any of my projects or even in some matte painting. So your final settings, you may want to change or choose uh, your render samples. I like to set it to about 100, something not too heavy. I also like to set it to adaptive sampling, make use of the latest blender features for that. And also under denoising, I like to turn denoising on, but essentially that's it. That's how I created this simple rock archway. And of course, as mentioned in my previous tutorial and this one, you can apply this method to any shape you want to create to make something look nice and realistic as a bit of a rocky asset. Of course, you can use any material as mentioned before. You can use paid for materials. Sometimes they can deliver a better result, but you can use any of these free ones too if you'd rather keep it open source and completely free. Well, that's all there is to it, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate your support and hope to see you in the next tutorial. Until then, this has been just the basics of how to create a rock archway inside a Blender version 2.9. Ha, huh, man, these archways really rock. <laughs>